Welcome to the Healthy Habit Podcast, everyone, to episode number 41. We're talking with practicing herbalist, licensed acupuncturist, and trained home birth midwife, Carrie G. Pattison is back with us, folks, for our monthly check-in. Carrie's the national educator at Natural Factors, an Isura certified supplement company. Mm -hmm. And just like us here at Healthy Habit Medical Center, Natural Factors products are used by practicing clinicians all across North America. Carrie, welcome back. We got a good topic lined up today. How are you doing? We do. Thanks so much for having me. This is, uh, congratulations on your almost your 50th. Unbelievable. <laughs> and you've been, you've been with us this whole way in our monthly yeah. check-in. So we appreciate you and, and everybody there at Natural Factors. So today we want to talk about necessary supplements for vegans and vegetarians. Let's, let's right. set the stage here. Yeah, I think for anybody who is on any sort of restrictive diet, and we've talked about restrictive diets in the past, but we forget that veganism and vegetarianism are a restricted diets. There are certain components that you are not consuming out of food sources. So we really should be taking supplements. It's an important way to ensure that anybody who is vegan or vegetarian can meet their nutritional needs and just maintain good health. Um, and there's a bunch of reasons why, which key reasons why, and I think we're going to talk about some supplements that are really, really critical for this, but it is something just to remind people that there are certain nutrients that you can only get from certain food groups. And we need to make sure that we have a full breadth of everything. Right. So some products we're going to touch on today include B12, Active B, Easy Iron, some of the whole earth and sea products, even a vegan version of like a fish oil, but from seaweed, from algae. Yeah, yeah. So where do you want to start us with then? What's the key one that we want to, people to have on their radar? I absolutely think the most key supplement for nutrient for somebody to supplement if they are a vegan or a vegetarian is B12, vitamin B12. It be, mainly because it's primarily found in animal products, right? right. Um, so if you're not consuming animal products, you are not getting this essential vitamin, right? It's essential because it's re we're required to supplement with it. And if we don't have it in our body, we're it's essential, what we would say essential for formulation of red blood cells, DNA synthesis, neurological function. And what we do know is that long-term deficiency of B12 can actually lead to permanent neurological damage, damage. like, and that's pretty intense, right? Um, we're also see things like anemia, you know, so low iron in the blood, nerve damage, anybody who is removing animal products, this is including dairy and eggs, they're going to be at a higher risk of vitamin B12 deficiency. And it's fascinating. I don't know if you've, you and Dr. Aaron have experienced this in your practice, but people will come in and they'll be like, oh my goodness, just within the last couple of weeks, all of a sudden there's this black cloud over my head. I'm so, you know, I'm under the weather as far as my emotions are concerned. I'm feeling really upset. Um, you know, and then I step back and I say, okay, well, what's changed? And then I find out six to eight weeks earlier, they decided to become, they decided to become a ve vegan mm. or a vegetarian. Right. And we do know that B12 is an interesting B vitamin that we can have a little bit of a reserve of it in our body. Whereas all of the other B12s, it's like in and out in a day. Um, but once we reach that reserve limit, man, that's when we really see some significant changes. What would be some of those first warning signs to, to look out for besides fatigue? I think fatigue B12, and then, yeah, um, you just, a lower mood in general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think it's fascinating because we can talk about how it is important for vegans and vegetarians, but we can also talk about anybody who has um, a disrupted digestive system. So B12 is the first thing that I'm sure all of us think about when it comes to aging population as well. And you give them a little bit of B12 and they're like, Whoa, I feel great. Mm -hmm. So that's really one of the things. Another thing, you know, is looking at anemia aspects and, and, and blood count and, you know, what we're talking about where most people think about that with iron, but B12 plays such a important important part of that, you know, so that old adage of like, just pulling down your eyelids and seeing, are they nice and red underneath mm -hmm. or are they pale? Like, this is another good thing to be looking for. Great. And so natural factors has the methylcobalamin B12 and the active B are those separate products? 
They are separate products. Um, and I usually give people the active B, right? Okay. Because that's going to be your B complex. So folate is an important thing to get as well as all of these other B vitamins. And honestly, with vegans and vegetarians, I find that it's even though I'm, I'm focused on B12, it might not, not just be B12 that we're seeing as a deficiency because of, of where it comes from in, in our food sources. Right. Um, I know so many, um, I, I know it's really sad, actually. I know so, I, I'm aware of so many vegetarians that their idea of being a vegetarian is to eat like a bean burrito. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that's not what, you know, whole food diets are are comprised of where you're getting a lot of, I, I am very aware of somebody who is a very high functioning, very healthy vegan, in my opinion. Um, and she literally spends 12 to 14 hours a day focused on food. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's something that is, and then she got pregnant. And so she did, she realized she needed to start adding meat back in. Um, but this is something where when we talk about B vitamins, which we should just have a whole show on B vitamins at some point right. in time, <laughs> you want to get the coenzymated form. So when you walk into healthy habit, when you walk into any of your other natural stores, look for the one that says coenzymated on there, because that means it's in its metabolically active form that the body can already utilize. And some of us actually are missing the genetic genetic capability to transform um, our B vitamins. So getting it in that form that we can already just immediately absorb and utilize, so, so critical. And in this case, that is that word you mentioned, methylcobalamin. That's the word that you want to see when it is associated with vitamin B12. Because then that means it's been methylated, which is what it, it needs to be in that form before the body can even use it. Yeah. And right. there's so many um, versions out there that are synthetic that I don't think that the body can can utilize. I know a lot yeah. of people get B vitamin shots, right? Yeah. And that might be cyanocobalamin, which is the synthetic, which their body might not be able to utilize. So I know you guys give B12 shots in yeah. your clinic yeah, and I'm sure that they the are no. exactly. I'm sure you guys are utilizing that, that activated form mm -hmm. because otherwise we're just putting something in our body that yeah, what the most expensive supplement that you can purchase or the most expensive B vitamin shot that you can purchase is the one that doesn't work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So how would this tie in then with iron? What, is that another common thing that vegans, vegetarians are lacking in? And how does that relate to B12 or are they completely yeah. separate in the body? No, I, I think that they are very, they're very interconnected, but you know, what we know is that there is iron present in certain plant-based foods. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can eat spinach, right? And I can get enough iron for, for my diet, but it's typically less bioavailable than compared to iron from animal sources. So what that means when we talk about bioavailability is that the body's going to have a lot more difficulty absorbing and utilizing that plant-based iron effectively. Right. Um, and iron is one of the things that we use for transporting oxygen throughout the body. And that's one of the ways that we can prevent anemia. Right. Um, uh, and so I, I think it's interesting that vegans and vegetarians, they really should be monitoring their iron levels and they should consider supplementing with iron, though. That's a fascinating thing, because if you go to you know, a mass market store and buy an iron supplement, it's probably just powdered rock. <laughs> And once again, right. you're not getting anything from it. Yeah. So you need to look for something like my favorite is easy iron. Um, and I know you guys carry a healthy habit because yep. it is an iron that your body actually can absorb and utilize. And it doesn't have that. It's a chewable. It's actually really shocking. It doesn't have that, that really metallic taste that you would associate with iron, which is fascinating that they're trying to create fake meat that has that kind of metallic taste metallic taste yeah. to it right they're trying to trying to create this but um <laughs> yeah and we can talk about that too because that <laughs> is bizarre, absolutely i just want everybody to know that that is genetic modification yeah. and you might think that it's vegetarian or vegan but typically it has started with the it started with some sort of like cell mm -hmm. or uterine lining from an animal and then it's being cultured, you know, and genetically yeah. modified from that. So 
not healthy in my opinion right. not healthy um that's my personal opinion <laughs> um well, but yeah, and, and one key issue when someone goes vegan vegetarian for the first time is they just start eating tons of lettuce and and just bulk vegetables or tons of veggies and pasta yeah or they just go just for the itself. carbs right yeah. it's just an insane amount of carbs so you know it is it's something that we talk about like when I was in the store and we talked about dieting, we did that diet consumer right. lecture, which I think there's still some, some stuff up on the healthy habit website about that. But, you know, anytime we're shifting anything in our diet, we're going to have metabolic changes, but we also have to look at food and yeah, you can't just eat romaine lettuce. You can't just eat bean burritos and you can't just eat pasta and tomato sauce. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not going to be useful or helpful. <laughs> Tell us about the uh, omega-3 fatty acids from algae source. Uh, people think only about fish oil. So they let's are. Introduce so them. If they haven't already heard of algae-based omega-3s, let's hear about it. Well, so we know these omega-3s that we are looking for are specifically EPA and DHA, right? Those are the ones that we have the research on as far as supporting healthy inflammatory responses, you know, longevity for the brain, cellular protection, et cetera, et cetera. These are primarily found in fatty fish. That's why you see fish oil on the shelf. Um, but there are plant-based sources. I think most vegetarians and vegans are probably where flaxseed they're like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to take a flaxseed supplement. Or one of my favorite things that w in, in previous episodes, we've talked about the doctrine of signatures, right? That idea that a plant looks like something it's going to do for our body. So another great source of plant omega threes in the body are walnuts. Mm -hmm. And what do walnuts look like? The brain, the brain, right? So they're full of really good fats for the brain. That being said, the amount of walnuts we'd have to eat in order right. to really get to those clinically supported levels would mean we're going to have other issues. <laughs> yeah, we've got tons of omega sixes with it. Exactly, the are really but high in omega sixes. These plant-based sources tend to provide the fo the main form that they have is something called ALA, mm. and that's you know it's it can be converted to EPA and DHA in the body, but not very efficiently. Like, we we yeah. keep talking about like. Food forms, we get, yes, we can get these nutrients from food forms, but they're not as efficient in the body as the main source that we would typically be eating if we were eating, you know, a, a meat um, omnivore diet, right? Right. So that's where we look at algal supplements. And this is the cool thing about, you know, the new world we live in is that we can find these sources. So algae is not new it's been around for you know since the dawn of time yeah. but we've discovered how high it is in some of these omega-3s so specifically algal sources are high in dha oh. um so you do want to go in and you want to make sure you know so you can see omega-3s that say that they are from an algal source so that's where people need to look at the bottle, right? right? You need to see that it says vegan on there. You need to see that it says vegetarian on there so that you can feel confident in what it is. I always tell people on the back of all natural factors products, there's this long list of does not contain. And you can just turn that over and see where it says does not contain animal products that, you know, so you can feel very confident okay. in it. Folks, we're talking with Carrie G. Patterson, all things making sure you thrive on a vegan vegetarian diet. So so then you are saying it is possible then right even though most through all human history there's been some kind of animal products involved in this day and age it's possible with the technology we have it is possible i think it's, it's challenging and you have to really really be focused on it yeah you're gonna have to make sure that you are supplementing with these things otherwise you are creating nutrient deficiencies in the body that you might not see today but it might show up you know, 20 years from now with say like osteopenia, because you didn't get enough vitamin D in your diet. Right. right. You know, so there are long-term effects that you might see. So if you, if you really talk to people who are successful with their veganism or their vegetarianism, you will probably walk into their house and see, you know, an entire cabinet of yeah. supplements that they are utilized daily to make sure that they are filling in these nutrient deficiencies. 
Got it. And so next up on the list, we even have vitamin D. This is another yeah. big one. Obviously, the getting outside in the sun is important too. Would you agree? And then how would that relate with supplementing as well? For right. Vegetarian? Yeah. Getting out in the sun is the most important way that we can get vitamin D. But um, we live in a culture nowadays where people are, you know, putting on sunscreen and they're wearing hats and they might you know, never take their sunglasses off outside. So yeah. even people that live in climates like Arizona, I, I mean, what percentage of people in your practice are you finding vitamin everybody. D deficient? Yeah, everybody. everybody, right? You'd yeah. think it's like, oh, we live here in this, but everybody's vitamin D yeah. deficient. So bone health, immune function, overall well-being, right? It is synthesized in the skin when we are exposed to sunlight, but um, you know, uh, those of us who are at higher latitudes, I'm like, absolutely. But it is more and more as I talk to people, I'm like, I'm just sorry, everybody has to be, um, sourcing it. So there are small amounts of vitamin D that we can obtain from plant-based foods. So there's some in mushrooms. Um, and what we typically see though, unfortunately is you, people are probably like, oh, I get enough vitamin D because, you know, it's in my milk, it's in my cereal, it's in this, it's mm -hmm. in that, right? It's all been fortified with vitamin D. Mm -hmm. But that's D2. Once again, it's not the active form of vitamin D that mm -hmm. your body needs in order to have the D benefit. So here's another situation where we're taking something, we're supplementing with something that's synthetic, created in a lab, like not, you know, not what nature intended. Um, I do want to really call out here. I think one of the main reasons we're talking about D with right. vegans and vegetarians though, is the sourcing of vitamin D3, which you want to see vitamin D3 um, supplements. And that typically is arising from the lanolin in sheep's wool, which is, you know, you can definitely get lanolin from sheep's wool and they're still happy little sheep out in the field, right? You know, there's nothing, it, it's not a painful process for them. There's nothing bad that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I think most vegans and vegetarians, you know, they're like, no, I just want, you know, especially vegans, I want nothing to do with any animal derived products at all. So I think most people are unaware of of the origins of vitamin d3 as a supplement so that's where you want to specifically be looking for a vegan d3 supplement it does exist it okay. comes yeah so yeah. that's Make, yeah once specifically again look for that d3 not just the d2 D, or if it, yes. it doesn't what if it just says vegan d it's probably the d2 it's version, probably if they're not yeah i mean it. Yeah. Yeah. They should specify it. That's right. the other thing, right? We've talked about that in previous episodes, transparency. They should tell you exactly what's in there. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, I'm not seeing what I want. Yeah. Probably something to question. Amazing. So how important would it be Carrie to even just do a blood test? You know, that's one thing that we see in a lot yeah. of our new patients. They come to us, they don't like going to doctors, but they love coming to our clinic. I'm not just, I'm just saying, Mm -hmm. uh, and they come, they haven't had a blood test ever. First, I've had a lot of people that have never had one, or it's been like 25 years, 10 years plus since they've had a blood test. How important is that? Check where your right. B12 levels are at, iron, ferritin. Exactly. You know, you know and I think that's a hundred percent important. I, I understand where people's hesitancies are because they get this thing that says like, oh, you're out of range here, you're out, but yeah. there's no there's no discussion around that. Um, the other thing is that, you know, in my training, in my education, people would come in with uh, something that said their ferritin was 12. And, you know, Western medicine is like, you're in range. Well, you know, my education is like, if it's under 35, your brain isn't functioning appropriately. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we have different levels of these things than say a Western practitioner, right? Because we're looking at more of the functionality around how it's affecting the entire body versus, um, you know, here's and that's, I think that that's where this, the, the fear of blood tests come into play is like, you know, I don't want to be boxed into this, this little thing. Right. And we have to remember that that little box of thing is not accurate for 
you know, normal, n- the normal population. So coming in with somebody that's actually going to walk you through and be like, no, actually, this is a level we want to see, or this is a level. And I'm really happy to see more and more um, opportunities to actually, there are, there are labs that are starting to actually create specific blood work for for practitioners like us, right? Yeah. Where we can really give people, but I think that that's a really great starting point because it opens up our eyes to so Absolutely. many things that might be missing. And there's a lot of good forward thinking companies that they put together specific blood panels for mm-hmm. vegans, vegetarians, like mm-hmm. that they already picked out the tests for you in like a bundle, right? And you select the vegetarian blood panel and they just pay for that and you do it. So there's convenient ways to do it. About five minutes to go here with Carrie. I do want to hear your thoughts on my one of my personal favorite products through Natural Factors is the Whole Earth and Sea Protein and Greens product. I've used yeah. countless bottles of that in oatmeal and smoothies. And tell us about this product. Why is it a standout? Why did you want to discuss this one today? Well, I think you know, just in general, if you if you think vegetarian vegan, you're going, oh, that I'm removing plant, I'm, I'm removing meat protein, right? So I have to replace it with plant protein, and how am I going to do that? And I, you know, the automatic like discussion in the world, and this is something where I see so many people come in and they're like, oh, I'm getting these meal kits and things like this, and I'm doing the vegan vegetarian one, and it comes with massive amounts of tofu and i'm like oh please stop right Mm. like we need to get we need plant protein can be very impactful plant protein can be very important i have big concerns around plant protein regarding the um toxicity potential Mm. so we have to remember that plants are grown in the ground and um and even if it is coming from an organic farm we don't know what that soil contained as far as heavy metals. And this is something that we see now, the more we're testing plant proteins, we're seeing a lot of heavy metal toxicity because these plants are just soaking up all of the toxins in the soil. So that is once again, where Ishura, you mentioned Ishura at the beginning, so important. They're now testing for, and this is new, they're now testing for up to 900 potential contaminants, including that full panel of all of the potential heavy metals that we want to be concerned of. So we can be confident in knowing that we're getting plant protein. The protein in greens has plant protein that comes from five different sources. That's another thing. If you're looking at a vegan or vegetarian plant protein source, you turn it over, it's typically like just pea protein or something, right? Mm. You want to get a full complex. But the thing that sets natural factors apart, which is always our thing, right? We're going to, we're determined to do all we can do, not just what we have to do, is that it, our protein and greens and our greens in the whole earth and sea line have been fermented as okay. well. And you can actually absorb upwards of 40% more protein yeah. when you ferment it. So this is a really wonderful way of knowing that you can actually get those protein sources, which vegans and vegetarians, another thing that I'm sure you see in your practice, like I do is muscle wasting because they're not getting adequate protein in their body mm-hmm. that their body is utilizing. Yeah. Um, and, so, not, and not lifting weights on top of that. It's a recipe yeah, for disaster. Exactly. So. You know, and we have, we actually have an Olympic athlete that is a vegan mm. and has just seen significant, significant changes happen utilizing this. So you can do it, you know, luckily yeah. he has a nutritionist that works for him full time. <laughs> so it, it helps, <laughs> but you can Amazing. also walk into your local natural health food store and they can really, really put you on the, on the right pathway, um, for vegan and vegetarian supplements. They are there to support you. Amazing. Carrie, we've talked about B12, how important it is to have the coenzyme, the coenzymated form, the methylcobalamin, the uh, vegan vitamin D3. These are, there are some hidden gems in this episode. So we'll make sure to <laughs> highlight them all in the uh, timestamps under the video, the whole earth and sea protein and greens line. We even hit on the easy iron and then algal sourced omega-3 supplements. What's a good thing to walk away with knowing and, and hearing about a lot of people are moving towards a vegan diet. There's vegan food yeah. trucks popping up here in Phoenix is a big food truck city. 
and there's a there's you know vegan festivals here vegetarian festivals what do you want people to to walk away with knowing in this episode i think it's the exact same thing we close out every session with it's about balance don't go too extreme I think the world of veganism and vegetarianism can get so extreme that people are actually really damaging themselves. So you have to step back and lay a really, really good foundation of, of supplementation and of getting these nutrients in a way that you know is going to be healthy and bioavailable for your body before you, you move forward. Um, with some of these things. So I, you know, the discussion for another day about whether it is, is long-term um, something that somebody should be doing, mm -hmm. but in, okay. in the case of vegan and vegetarianism, I absolutely think you can be successful with these things when you are focused on making sure you are getting all of the nutrients to support your everyday basic cellular needs in your body. Can I finish with one more question for you? Yeah, sure. So we also have like the opposite going on where people are going like carnivore. Oh, all full the way. Blast. Mean, what do you, mean you think thing? that's another extreme? Too okay, much? so yes, this now is like, I mean, extremes in general yeah. are not good. So this is balance in all things, people. Yeah. This is why I am such a fan of just whole food diets in general. There you go. Don't nope and and vegans and vegetarians. I want you to hear me, everybody. Stop with the processed foods, right? There Just you because you're vegan doesn't mean that you can go in and and buy a bunch of processed foods. Part of the joy of being a vegan and a vegetarian when I'm friending spending time with my friends who are is the cooking of mm. the food and the celebration of the beautiful plants that the earth has given us. So step back and pay attention to why and enjoy the fruits of mother nature. Appreciate you as always, Carrie. Thanks for your consistency and for coming yeah. on in our monthly check-in. You're incredible.